we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, we've come with a thousand, ten thousand desires. As long as we don't have sin, you said that you will fulfill them. May that promise happen at this time. You say with your mouth, and I will be responsible, you've said. Please forgive this lacking servant's sins, and may this prayer of blessing be heard. When our spirit soul does well, everything does well. Today may be a blessed time where our spirit surely does well. You've said we receive as much as we love. With that love, may I, my children, be blessed. May we become someone with blessings in our late age, and may our children do more well and help us to be patriots to our country. And for world peace, may we become ambassadors of Christ. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's greet the person next to us. Let's have our desires fulfilled. Let's have our desires fulfilled. So when I see you, it's I'm so glad to see you. I just want to run after you and hug you. God is living. Lord, Lord, if you don't know the Lord, you can't even receive salvation. So you say, Lord, so you say, Lord, Lord, but it says there are true and there are fakes. So let's read from Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. So all of the world, you know, people are good at saying, Lord, Lord, and you've come here to pray. But who is it that has to hear your prayer? You know, if you get into school, each time you go up each grade and, and then you graduate, you know, when you go work, you know, each order has to be correct. So what times are we in, whether it be career or the world, they say, Lord, Lord, and yet there's so many people who lie because they don't know the Lord. But where in the Bible does it say just because you've been deceived that he's going to let it go? When you pray, Psalms chapter 66, verse 18, it's the Lord who hears that prayer. But if you have sin, the Lord says he won't hear. So not knowing the Lord is heresy. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But in Korea, they say they talk about heretics the most. Those people who are studying heresy, they don't even know the Lord. So that's ridiculous. So it's these demons that listen to the demons. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, denying the Lord, that is heresy. So if you don't know the Lord, that is heresy. So who is the Lord? The Lord is Christ, forced at repentance. So if you don't know forced at repentance and you say you're living a life of faith, if you die, you know, you'll go to hell. The the European churches, for two, you know, it's been 2,000 years and yet they're all ruined because they don't know the Lord, Christ. Why don't they know? Because he's, God has made it a mystery. Even your own secrets, there's not many people who know them. But even more so, God, can anyone know? Can anyone just know his secrets? But he's He's let us know. So how blessed is this? And so the demons, they're so envious of this. And forced their repentance, the Lord denying this is heresy. So that's when all your prayers are heard. So... Our ancestors' sins to whom? To Jehovah. And our sins to the Lord. And so Jehovah, Lord, that's Jesus' sign. So the European, the American churches, they Jehovah's missing. And so they're, so if Jehovah's missing, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 11, it's by Jehovah that we receive salvation. So if there's no Jehovah, there's no salvation. And that's why Jehovah is, uh, that's why the European church is all ruined. You know what's so sad? If you don't know how, how to give thanks, you know, God's going to give us the word. But if you don't know thanksgiving, you don't know God's will. You look at people who suffer, they don't have thanksgiving. God's will is that we give thanks in all things. But because there's no thanksgiving, that's why they're suffering. If you do things by my strength, you'll be ruined. You look at people who suffer, it's, I'll do it, I'll do it. 
in America, one of the pastors said, can you pray for me because I can't even uh, pass urine. And so I've been praying for him about two days. If you do things, you know, by my strength, you see if you can, you know, even do a pee by yourself. You know, if you're doing things by strength, where is there anything that's yours? But it's because you say, what isn't mine is mine. Well, if you say it's yours, you see if you can, you know, poo or wee by yourself. If you could breathe of your own accord, who would die? As soon as you're born, you breathe. You've been trained enough for that long, and yet you can't even breathe of your own accord. Why not? Because you have a demon where you can't even say amen. As soon as you say, it's mine, so someone in America was saying their child doesn't listen to them. That's because you always do things by my strength. If I was God, I would have already killed you. You know, you need to realize your children not listening. You need to realize and you need to repent. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Romans chapter 14, verse 6 to 8. Everything belongs to the Lord. My body, my life, it all belongs to the Lord. So you not doing well, you don't have a relationship with the Lord. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 22, 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Amen. So if your name is mentioned, oh, that person had a demon, that person had cancer, that person, you know, was healed. There are people who hate this. You know, later, if their testimony comes out on a tape, they hate this. You know why? Because they have demons that try to do things of by my strength. So I'm not mine. I belong to the Lord. So it's the Lord who gives me cancer and makes it healed, can put demons inside of me, take them out, can make me unhappy, make me happy. So you and I, for his glory, in others, for others to repent and to receive blessings, we have to become witnesses. In all things, we have to become witnesses. Luke chapter 24, verse 48. There are people who would volunteer to become a witness, you know. So we need to be used. But, you know, I, you know if this happens, they pout. So I say, you know, do they want death? This person standing in front of you, I'm the same, you're the same. What is it that God wants to receive through us? Glory. So it's where unhappiness becomes happiness, where problems are solved. So if he does that for us, you know, we have to boast of that. We have to continue to give thanks. But you just you just eat it up and put it away. What does it say in Deuteronomy? Chapter 4, it says you have to know your son, you have to have your son know, know, your grandson to know. But, you know, you just put it away after just your generation and then... So, I'm going to read this word again. So, Jesus Christ says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will they go to heaven or not? No, he says there are some that won't. So Matthew chapter 25, verse 10, 11, 12. So those not going to heaven, even though they say, Lord, Lord. No matter how much you say, Lord, with your mouth, that's not how you receive salvation. Here it says you can't go. Why not? You say, Lord, Lord. But there are people who don't know him. They're the ones that don't go, well, that can't enter. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. So what is God's will? all things to be thankful. But if you don't do forced air repentance, you can't have thanksgiving. So if you have cancer, so Korea, you know, it's we're in danger. These people with cancer, because they're in so much pain and it costs so much money, so they're saying they're going to make a law where you die early. You think God's going to leave you alone? He's going to make an even more scary disease. 
who make it so that you, you know, lose all your money. If you have, if God gives you a disease, it's for you to realize, for you to obey and become a man. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Even Jesus, God's son, he was, he suffered, he was trained so he would obey. So if you, you think that it's going to work by dying early with euthanasia, he'll make an even more scary disease. I thought people, they don't want to wake up. They're just doing these other things. That means there'll be more disease other diseases that can't be cured and then not just that you'll end up losing even more money your suffering will be even worse if you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 if you obey his word he'll make you chief in the world but if you don't obey what is that obedience it's faith John chapter 3 verse 36 so if you don't obey he will make you obey by suffering so he'll take away money he'll hit you so that you'll you have disease in your body and then he'll even hit you with nature so it's only so all men are liars Romans chapter 3 verse 4 so these these religions that liars have made you know what kind of is that a religion so if you make denominations do you have truth or not if you don't have truth you can't, if you don't have truth, you can't receive favor. Those who make denominations, there is no way for them to receive favor. Salvation. Romans chapter 2 verse 8. And yet they don't even know this and they lie. You know, in Korea, how is it that we can still have these lies so openly? Now let's fix it. So Matthew, um, verse 21. So even though you say, Lord, Lord, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven and then verse 22 many will say to me on that day lord lord did we not prophesy in your name you know weren't we pastors weren't we teachers didn't we do a good thing and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles you know we gathered like a dog pack we gathered like a trash can you know didn't we do good things and the lord says you have nothing to do with me even though it was done in the lord's name he says you have nothing to do with me well, what about Pastor Park? What about you? What about Pusan First Church? You know, saying, Lord, Lord, is this right in front of God or wrong? And then verse 23, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So he's saying, you know, you can just go to hell, depart. So this is how the Lord has spoken. So who is it that goes to heaven? It's someone who has a right relationship with the Lord. You have to have a right relationship with the Lord. But the problem with the fakes, in the American Bible, Jehovah's missing. They took it out about 100 years ago, these fake pastors, these fake theologians. Those people, if we survey what their descendants are doing now, you know, it, it would be exact, but they took out Jehovah and they've only put in the Lord. Let's say Busan Station is the Lord, and let's say Jehovah is Seoul Station, and you need to go to Seoul. So if you have the Lord, you need to have Jehovah. But if you've taken away the, the station that you need to go, then what does it mean? You'll go to hell. So Jesus' sign is if you give thanks to the Lord, then Jehovah will answer. So that's Jesus' one and only sign. And yet there are people who don't understand this. So the Lord, it's because we don't know the Lord properly. You may say, Lord, Lord, but you'll go to hell. You may do all sorts of things in the Lord's name, but he says, I never knew you, knew you. So fakes, you know, they can't discern if someone's saying Lord truly or not. And so what does God say? What is denying the Lord? It is heresy, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. So many people in Korea talk about heresy, but they don't know what it is. Well, Pastor, why didn't you teach this us 10, 20 years ago? Well, those people who act so smart and are, you know, studying. I just do what the Father says. Just because I, I think that they're pitiful, you know, I have to do what the Lord says. All things, you have to do what the Master says. If you do whatever you please, you'll be ruined. You may boast of your name, but in front of God, you're his enemy. So let's all we have to do is obey. So our desires have to be fulfilled because it's God's commandment. Because he said to surely receive blessings. So he's not just, he doesn't just say receive blessings as words. He created all of creation and gave it to us. So 
Why is it that it was taken away? Because of disobedience. It's because of this sin of what was pleasing to the eye. If we'd quickly repented, but instead we just we just ate it. We picked, we picked it and ate it. And then Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, when he asked, where are you? If, if we'd said, oh, yes, I ate it and I hid. But instead of confessing, we didn't. So it's because of sin that there are problems. So here it says, if, even if you say, Lord, Lord, you can't go to heaven. So if you want to say, Lord, Lord, you have to know him properly. So you have to know him properly and say, Lord, Lord, to go to heaven. So those who don't know the Lord or deny him, that is heresy. Let's find 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. So if you don't know the Lord, that is heresy. Heresy, he heretics have no salvation. So who is the Lord? It's so sad. So you may heal diseases and cast out demons in the Lord's name, but the Lord says, I, don't, I never knew you. Why? Why would he do that when it was done in the Lord's name? You say you're praying that you seem to be doing well, but do you have a right relationship with the Lord? So if you don't know the Lord and you say, Lord, Lord, then you're going to hell. That's what's pointed out here. So if you want your desires to be fulfilled, you know, we all have that heart. And God says he will give it to you. He will heal your diseases. He will do everything. So why doesn't it work? it's because you don't know the Lord properly. If you don't know him or deny him, that is heresy. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1, let's read it together. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Amen. So if you deny the law, what is that? It's heresy. So why do they deny him? Is it because they know or they don't know? It's because they don't know. So Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 25, let's find that. So how sad is this? So if you don't know the Lord properly, so in the Lord's name you may cast out demons, heal disease, do all sorts of things, but there's no salvation. So who is it? that you know as the Lord. There's nowhere that talks about heresy as much as Korea, and yet they don't know that denying the Lord is heresy. That is so sad. You know, I don't know if they're, they, they're wanting to be ruined. So if you don't know the Lord and you talk about someone being a heretic and slandering them and condemning them, what what is their result? You know, you hear the rumors, those pastors or elders who slandered forced their repentance, what happened to them? Well, they, they've suicided or they've been, you know, destroyed in some accident. So if you still can't realize, when will you realize, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 19, that evil, even though problems happen, they cannot realize. So let's realize correctly. So if you don't know the Lord, no matter how much you call out, Lord, Lord, there is no salvation. You may show all sorts of power in the Lord's name. Oh, I'm doing all these good works. You may gather all these fakes like in a trash can, but there's no salvation. No matter how well you make the building, you know, in Korea, no matter how well we build, they're not as good as the buildings in Europe. But now they're empty. And these these drunk demons, you know, they go around there just just cursing God. The European churches, they're sold as pubs. You know, they're sold for fashion shows. In the Soviet Union, you know, they... they um, sell all sorts of things inside churches. You know, I went to uh, an international hotel and it was a church. And I said, why are there these angels there? And they said, you know, they had to leave it in case the building, you know, fell down. That's what they're doing. So you think the Soviet Union, they're going to do well. You know, the Soviet Union's gone. They've only just left with a peace, which is Russia. So what kind of person am I? If you deny the law, what is that? So do you, deny, do you not deny him because you know or not know? Well, if even if you don't know the law, that is heresy. Let's read together. 
Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not know you and on the families that do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob. They have devoured him and consumed him and have laid waste his habitation. Amen. So God is saying, if you don't know the Lord, that is heresy. And if you don't pray in the Lord's name, then the Lord's wrath, you will receive the Lord's wrath. That's what God has said. So do you have to know the Lord or is it okay not to know him? If you don't know the Lord, there is no salvation and you'll receive his wrath. So all you do is suffer. So we have to surely know the Lord. And that's why Mark chapter 9 verse 29 it says, there is no other way but prayer. That's what Jesus has said. So let's find Psalms chapter 66 verse 18. So this prayer, so if you want to receive answers for your prayer, the Lord has to hear our prayers for answers to come. But if you don't know the Lord or if you deny him or if you don't pray in his name, that's all heresy. So if you go to a fake church, so now they're saying, Lord, Lord. Before, they'd say, what? You think God's deaf? Why do you have to call out Lord, Lord? I'm sure they wouldn't have said that to us. I don't know who they said that about. But if you call on the Lord three times, you know they they criticize that these fakes. It's because we don't know the Lord properly. So we say Lord, Lord, but we don't know if it's true or false, if it's a Lord where we can go to heaven or we can't go to heaven, if it's a Lord where we can receive answers or not. We, we don't know. So why do you say you don't do well because we don't know the Lord properly. Psalms chapter 66, verse 18. Let's read it. If I regard wickedness in my heart, the law will not hear. Amen. So there is no other way but prayer. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. Prayer is the greatest. So you pray all so much. Why doesn't he hear? Who doesn't hear? The Lord. Why? Because there's sin. So who is it that doesn't hear? So when you pray, firstly, it's the Lord. So if you don't know the Lord or you don't pray in his name, then you are a heretic who is denying the Lord. So if you don't know the Lord, it's not going to work. So that's, you know, it's important to know him. It's been emphasized that we need to know him. So who is the Lord? The Lord helps me. Let's find Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. So a church without Christ, 100% it's fake because it's heresy. If you don't know the Lord properly, that is heresy. So we have to know the Lord properly. So let's live. That's why you're here to live, to do more well to have blessings in your late age, to pass blessings to your children and with those blessings for your family to do well, but to be a patriot to our country, to be a country to our country and our people, a patriot to our country and our people. And on top of that, for world peace, we have to become an ambassador of Christ, don't we? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. So Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6. So what is it the Lord does so that if you don't know him, you're a heretic, even if you pray, you won't receive answers. If you deny the Lord, then you're a heretic that goes to hell. Even though you have power, you cast out demons, heal diseases. If you don't know the Lord properly, there's no salvation. Why? Why would he say this? Because it's only the Lord who can genuinely help us. Let's read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, so that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Amen. So who does the Lord help? So just because you attend church, it's not the pastor who helps you. Just because you attend church, it's not God who directly helps you. No matter what you do, the one that will help you is the Lord. It's only the Lord who will help me. You know, you talk about money, fame, you know, power. They can't help you. Who is it that helps you? It's only the Lord. So just in case there's someone next to you who will forget, let's say it's the Lord who helps. It's the Lord who helps. It's the Lord who helps. It's only the Lord that helps. It's only the Lord that helps. It's only the Lord that helps. It's only the Lord. So how important is the Lord 
If you don't know the Lord, that is heresy. If you deny the Lord, that is heresy. If you don't pray in the Lord's name, that is heresy. Why is it that God has emphasized this? So who is the Lord? It's the most easy. You know what torments me? It's because of my sin, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 1. It's me that shreds my own heart. This sin, it's not just fixing it, but to make it new. As like from the from the beginning. So who is the Lord? The Lord is Christ. Let's find Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. So how precious is this? We talk about Lord, Lord, but people who don't have Christ, and that's why Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, a sermon without Christ is a fake sermon that will drag you to hell. Even though it's philosophical, you know, even if it's you know, it's about psychology or education or counseling. It is because it is elementary knowledge. Galatians chapter 4, verse 9. So if you're not doing well, it's because you don't have a right relationship with the Lord. So if you don't know who the Lord is, if you didn't if you deny him, if you don't pray in his name, then we can't receive salvation. So 3 John verse 2, your spirit soul won't do well. So in Korea, you know, the politicians are already rumored that they lie so much. You know, this president, they seem, he seems to be doing everything not to lie. You know, that's a good thing. So world peace can't come about because of lies. Whatever country, if they lie, they can't have peace. But to not lie, and if you become honest, so where is there honest, anyone honest in, in this on this in this world all men are lying Romans chapter 3 verse 4 but because people don't know this there are people who say I don't need the Lord what 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 have I said how painful is cancer that people ask to be killed they want to make a law those who make those laws they will be punished by God and those who just because you die early, why does God make you suffer? So that you realize and seek the Lord. But if you just, with you, euthanasia, you just die and get rid of it, then God will make an even more scary disease. He'll be like, oh, I gave this for them to realize, for them to obey, and they're doing these other things. Well, then there'll be some scary disease. So don't do that. So what you have now, you know, they've researched about cancer and if that doesn't work, then let's return to the Lord. It's He who heals. There's no one that helps us but the Lord. He helps us with disease. He helps us with all things. If the Lord helps, it will happen. You will be healed. Let's receive this help. Let's receive the healing. Let's receive the Lord's help. So it's not just your disease that is healed. If your spirit soul does well, you go to heaven. Everything does well, and your children do more well, and he will also heal your disease. This is the Father's promise, 3 John, verse 2. So this lacking person, I'm, I'm a witness of that. So who is it that helps? It's only the Lord. So who is the Lord? Let's read Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. So the Lord is Christ. So if we don't know the Lord, then we become her heresies. If you don't pray in the Lord's name, you receive his wrath. If you deny the Lord, that is her heresies. So who is the Lord? The Lord helps me. Every time I pray, it's the Lord that hears. So who is the Lord? The Lord is Christ. And what is Christ? The mystery of God. Let's find Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. So something so good, so easy. Christ. The Lord is Christ. So who is Christ? The mystery of God. So not anyone can know this. You know, something that is so easy and simple and gives me happiness. So Christ makes us righteous. By forced out repentance, we become righteous. Romans chapter 4 verse 6, then you receive happiness. So why is it that you hate this way of happiness? Well, it's not just that he gives happiness. 
If you do false day repentance, you become righteous, so you're happy. So Christ is light, so you start to shine. So to so these demons who sin that go to faith church, they all hate the light. John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. So those who go to faith churches, they hate false day repentance, the light the most. Why? Because John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21, it's because they're evil. Because they haven't repented of their sins. They hate the light. So if you go to a fake church, they say, Lord, but they don't do false day repentance. Why not? Because they're evil. They hate the light. John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21, read it later. So let's read together. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. So the Christ is Lord, um, the mystery of God. Let's read it. That their hearts may be encouraged, having been to knit together in love and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself. So what is Christ? Christ is the mystery of God. Realizing Christ is the mystery of God. So you say you believe in God, and these fakes, you don't know the mystery of God. They don't have salvation because they don't know the Lord. Oh, pastor, the, the mystery of God is to realize Christ. It doesn't say Lord. Well, then we have to know the, the relationship between the Lord and Christ. So it says, the Lord is Christ, they're one. Whether it's the Lord or Christ, they're the same. So here it says, Christ is the mystery of God, which is to realize Christ. So let's let's realize Christ. Well, that is the mystery of Christ. Let's read Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. It seems like you know this well, but why is it you can't receive answers? It seems like you know this well, but why is it that your prayers aren't heard? Why is it that your desires aren't being fulfilled? There's still, there's still another thing that's wrong. You know, the space shuttle Columbia, as it tried to go up into space, you know, one of the female teachers still hasn't come back. So what, what went wrong? There was something really small. God's word is even more precise than that. So if there's one thing that's wrong, so we all want success. What is worldly success? To earn some money, to have some fame, to have power. There's nothing else. So this worldly success, you know, you, you're mistaken to thinking that worldly success, but it's beastly standards. But God says there's no salvation. You can't become a man. Those things, you know, in the Lee dynasty, out of the kings, who was a man? The parents killed the children. The children killed the parents. You know, they killed their siblings. How could that be a man? If you look at the Lee dynasty, you know, those people who passed all the tests, you know, they're discussing each other, but all they do is kill others. And that's why we have these four factions, you know, it, according to each direction. They they killed this way, they killed that way. You know, how is it that the king's, the king's family ended up more filthy than a dog pig? What, you know, back then their religion was confusion, Confucianism and Buddhism, but those things didn't work. So, Almighty God, He's come, and the Gospels come. But why doesn't it work? Because the fakes who say, Lord, Lord, there's no one who's doing it truly. So who does the will of God? Who is the Lord? The Lord is Christ. Christ is the mystery of God. What is the mystery of God? It's the mystery of Christ. Let's read Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. To whom God will to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. So Christ coming inside of me is a mystery. So how does Christ come inside of me? What is Christ? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, let's find that. It's with 
the blood of Christ, that we wash our sins. That is receiving grace. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. So the mystery of Christ is Christ comes inside of me and that is hope. You know, they say faith is like, is like getting married. That's in Matthew chapter 25. If you look 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 verse 2 Christ is our only husband but you wander around not even knowing Christ and then you come to church saying you, you've you've married so if you marry without a husband you know a woman just marries by, by herself is, is that is that being of your right mind our bridegroom is our husband is only Christ 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2 so if you were to change church this woman who said she's married but she doesn't have a husband Christ then you're crazy and that's why Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 3 everyone's crazy so at your own wedding you don't even have a husband and yet you say that you know so that's what you're doing. If you you don't know the law, but you're saying Lord, Lord, you don't have a husband, but you're saying darling, darling. So Christ is my husband. Two Corinthians chapter eleven verse two. So a sermon about Christ is a fake sermon. Colossians chapter two verse eight. So if you're evangelizing, if you're doing mission work, then you have to speak the mystery of Christ. Colossians chapter four verse three. But these fake pastors. We don't do the mystery of Christ and they say, Lord, Lord, how can you go to those place, places saying that there's a church? There's no one that knows. But just because you don't know, does that mean you're not a heretic? If you don't know or if you deny, it's all heresy. So who is it that's the heretic? Those who don't do forced repentance, they're the heretics. So how much is the world in reverse and how much are lies running rampant if you say true words they treat you as an enemy Galatians chapter 4 verse 16 that's what the demons do but correct words is love why is God's word love because it's correct words it's true so let's have our desires fulfilled let's read together Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace amen so christ coming inside of me is the mystery of christ what does christ do it makes us receive grace where do we receive grace some people say isn't it god's grace yes in christ in false get repentance that's where god is jesus is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. In Christ, the whole Trinity is there. So we have to go in Christ to receive grace. So here God says, you receive grace by Christ, which is to have your sins forgiven. It's by the blood of Christ that our sins are forgiven. That's receiving grace. So please listen carefully. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Let's read it again. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. Amen. So it's by his blood you become redeemed and your sins are forgiven. So what is it we first receive in Christ? We receive grace. So if you go to a fake church without false state repentance and they say they receive grace, is that right? And that's why you become a gathering where you say, Lord, Lord, but you go to hell. You may say, Lord, Lord, you heal diseases, you cast out demons, but there's no salvation. Why? Because you don't know the Lord. You haven't prayed in the Lord's name. So denying the Lord is heresy. That's what God's appointed. So who is the Lord? The Lord is Christ. What is Christ? The mystery of God. What is the mystery of God? The mystery of Christ. What is the mystery of Christ? Nehemiah chapter 9, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. It's doing false state repentance with the blood of Christ. That's when Christ enters inside of me. As Christ enters inside of me and solves the problem of sin, as soon as you receive grace, as soon as you're forgiven of all your sins, you receive grace. That moment you receive grace, then he changes to the Lord who helps you. So the Lord and Christ are the same. Christ forgives by washing my sins. And after all that has happened, it's when I give thanks, already he becomes the Lord who helps me. So the Lord, it's when you do that quarter of thanksgiving, that's when he becomes the Lord that helps you. 
So what is grace? We receive grace in Christ by four-step repentance when we're forgiven of our sins. That's when we receive grace. So if you receive grace that last quarter, that's when the Lord is with you. Let's find Luke chapter 1 verse 28. So if you are doing four-step repentance properly, when you do four-step repentance, just go, uh, oh, I am so good at lying. That's what you have to confess. I am so double-minded. I'm an opportunist. If it's beneficial to me, you know, I'll act so good at the church, but as soon as it's a bit of disadvantage to you or you're going to get curses, then you just slip away like some mudfish and I'm so sly and double-minded. That's what you have to confess. You don't confess that and you're just like, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like you're some shaman with the with you know possessed by a spirit. You know, you might be. So you have to confess what you're doing wrong. So if you're lying to your spouse, you have to say you have to confess. Oh, I lie so much. If you're disobedient to your parents, you have to say I torment my parents. I I hurt their you know I hurt their heart. You have to confess your sins. One John chapter one verse nine. You have to confess. That's when the Lord helps you, and your personalities that you can't fix, He will fix it. But instead of confessing, you're like blah 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 blah. You just say these. You know, strange things. Yes, there are times where you speak in tongue when you don't know your sins, you don't know your ancestors' sins, and things aren't working out. If you keep praying, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, then you speak in tongues. And then to be to be fixed in that way, that's fine. But last year, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this year, blah, blah, blah. And there's nothing that's being fixed. There's something wrong. You have to realize the Lord helps. There's no one but the Lord who can help me. So you say you have problems. Why aren't you receiving help? Because you don't keep confessing your sins. Psalm chapter 66, verse 18. The Lord helps you, but you have to make it so that He will hear your prayers. Oh, I have a lot of envies. I have a lot of jealousies. You have to confess so that He will fix you. But you don't do this and you just sit there. So God's like, until you confess, until you obey my word. When 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, it's when you say, I have this sin, until that time, these days, there's, there's one thing that I'm not repenting well in. You know, a spouse is two or one, we're one flesh. You know, when you brush your teeth, you only brush one side. Why, why do you brush both sides? Spouses? Are, are, are they two bodies or one? Matthew chapter 19 verse 45, you're one body. So if your heart, you know, people say, oh, isn't it just enough to be one heart? No, it's, that's why it says that your body has to be one. So what happens if your husband hasn't brushed his teeth? What do you do? You just keep nagging and, and, but have you ever brushed it for him? Have you ever brushed it for your wife? So you don't do according to the word. So it means you haven't repented enough. Because you're one body. Don't say, oh, that silence and do it. You go do it for them. Don't just say it with your words. You say amen, but let's see if you do it or not. So if you do this, then your spouse relationship, you know, you, the, the sesame seeds melt and you become sesame oil. In other words, you become happy. So we say we're doing according to the word. We say we're acknowledging the Lord. But that, those, that small thing, you're not confessing your sins. You say you're loving your spouse, but you haven't, you haven't properly. You have to confess that. It's that's when he confesses you. That's when you go inside of Christ. If you're in Christ, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, God himself does it. If God himself is doing it, he does it by the Lord's help. So if you don't know the Lord, or if you deny, deny him, or if you don't pray in his name, that is heresy. 
So who is he? He's Christ, four step repentance. Is this our man? So at this time, Psalm chapter 46, verse 5, he said, Surely he will help you. Who? God. But this God, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 1 to 5, it's after you finish four step repentance. Jehovah who sends us to heaven, he becomes the Lord Jehovah. And in verse 7, it becomes the Lord God Jehovah. So it becomes, he changes, so he becomes the Jehovah who helps me, God who helps me. So when you do forced repentance by the blood of Christ, you receive grace in Christ. So in Christ, as your sins are forgiven, the last step, why do you have thanksgiving? Because he changes to the Lord who helps you. So he'll help you. So when you come here, even if you don't know a thing, if you go to a restaurant, you know, you don't research how much nutrition. That's not how you buy that food. If it's tasty, you just go and buy it. But at that restaurant, so this is what I heard in America. You know, a lot of soft tofu was sold in America because it's good for you. But every time they made that tofu, before it went out to the customers, they would just pour two tablespoons of MSG in it. So these days, no one buys it. No one knew. It's only after, you know, you're deceived and you've ruined your health. But who is it that knew this? The employees at the restaurant, when they saw that people are doing that, they'd be saying, don't ever buy that. And so... So, so even with food, it's like that. But if you don't know the Lord properly and you're in, you're a heretic, we have to realize from today, let's have a new start. Let's know the Lord properly. That's how you, I, our children, our, our country will receive help. Let's receive the Lord's help. It's only the Lord who helps. So the Lord is Christ. Christ, he solves the problem of our sin. He makes us receive grace. Let's read Luke chapter 1, verse 28. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In Christ, we receive grace. By the blood of Christ, our sins are forgiven. After you receive grace, then the Lord who helps us appears. So when we give thanks, God tells us to give thanks because if you receive the Lord's help, then you end up giving thanksgiving that last quarter. If someone couldn't breathe and they're able to breathe, they're like, thank you. Someone who was hungry and someone gives them food, they're like, thank you. So it comes out. And that's why the last quarter is thanksgiving. It's not where you, you don't have anything and you're forcing yourself to give thanks. Thanksgiving, it's you sincerely are thankful because you've received help. So what kind of person am I? Are you knowing the Lord properly? The Lord starts with the mystery of God. So the mystery of Christ, the mystery of godliness, the mystery of faith, the mystery of God, the gospel. But you don't know a thing about the mysteries. And you say, Lord, Lord, what a lie that is. If you don't know the Lord, or if you don't pray in his name, you'll receive the Lord's wrath. And if you don't know the Lord, and you never you never heard about the mysteries, if you deny the Lord, that is heresy. Today, what kind of person am I? Have I come here truly knowing the Lord? If I didn't know him, from today, we have to do four-step repentance. And after receiving grace, after our sins are forgiven, after going inside of Christ and he comes inside of me, and after receiving grace, the last quarter, he changes to the Lord who helps me. The Lord is with me. So what is it that we have to do? There's nothing but confessing our sins. Then that last quarter when we give thanks, because the Lord helps me, because my disease is healed, because my desires are fulfilled, because my children become obedient, because I do more and more well, because I become a patriot to the country, thanksgiving is poured out. That's the person who truly knows the Lord. May we all receive this blessing. Is this amen? So with the Lord's help, may our desires be fulfilled. Let's all pray.
truly good father this amazing love thank you for giving this as a mystery to us may we now confess that i'm the worst of sinners when we confess a lot of sins we receive a lot of grace romans chapter 5 verse 20 maybe may we be witnesses of this word because we confessed a lot of our sins we received a lot of grace and may we witness that we receive so much of the Lord's help. May I do well, my children, my family do well to be patriots to our country, and may we live for world peace. And so, by giving thanks to God, may we give glory. We believe the Lord's help will come upon us. To those who love you, to those who give thanks to the Lord. Jesus is one sign. When we give thanks to the Lord, then Jehovah will answer. At this time, this help on all of us, even on the education branches, may the Lord's help be upon us and may all our desires be fulfilled. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the great love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and to now know the Lord properly by the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ. When we do forced our repentance, that last quarter, when Christ changes to the Lord who helps me, this mystery that helps me when we confess our sins and pray, the Lord will hear and help. And with that help, may we and our children do well, to do more and more well, and to live as a patriot. Those who decide upon this, their families, their children, on this country and our people, those in faith who want world peace, may you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless. Amen.